we want to filter this table by this list of partial text contains criteria. What that means is I'm looking for x, y, z. I found a match there. Here's one, but also down here. So it doesn't matter where it appears in the text string. It's just got to contain that. Now I'm going to show you two ways. We'll filter the table when it finds the partial text criteria, and then we'll filter when it doesn't find it. Now Microsoft 365 Excel keeps giving us more and more amazing functions. Now I'm going to show you how to do this, and I will also show you the early way we did it with Microsoft 365, and then the old school way. Now, anytime we have partial text, we're going to use the search function. Now, search will take some text. That's just a, a single item. That's not the list yet. And when I comma, I can give it this entire column here. And search will give us an answer for each. For example, here it will say 1 because it found it in the first position. Down here, I think about 4 or 5. So when I enter this, it gives me an array. There's the 5, there's the 1. F2, and what we want to do is put the entire list in. But there's a problem. This is a function argument array operation right here that gives lots of answers. We can't match up two columns with an uneven number of rows. But if this was vertical with rows and we could extend this across the columns in a single row, you're allowed to do that. So no problem. We'll take this and use one of the amazing new Microsoft 365 function to row. And if I select this in F9, you can see now it's across the columns rather than the rows. Control Z, and when I hit Enter, now we have something we can work with. I know for each row that has a number, that means that there's a match. So XYZ was found here, AA was found here, ABC right here. Now here's where the new amazing Microsoft 365 is so amazing. Because at this point, what I'd like to do is row by row add the numbers together. And the way we used to do it is we had to do matrix algebra. And that's a complicated topic. Now here's how we did it in Microsoft 365 back in 2000. We had the amazing new filter, but we didn't have by row, which is what we're going to use. So we had to use Mamult. 2010 or later, oh, that is a big formula. Now, F2, I need to convert these to trues and falses first. So I'm going to say is number close. I want to convert those to numbers. So I have to use some math operation. I'm going to use double negative because it tends to be the fastest. Now from that, I need to row by row add to get a single column with either 0 or some number. Down here, we'll get 2. Right here, we'll get 1. Here, we'll get 0. F2 by row is just an amazing function. There's the array. And at the end, comma, what Microsoft should have done is to just let us put the sum function here, right? And then by row could take the sum and deliver a single column by summing the rows. But we have to create a function in this argument. And the function that creates functions is lambda. And we need to do two things in lambda. I need to create a parameter or variable that will communicate with by row so that it knows to go row by row. I'm just going to use r. You don't have to put it in double quotes. You can name it whatever you want, comma. And here's where we do the calculation. Sum what? Each one of the rows. That's the variable that Lambda defined to communicate with by rows. Close. And here's a crazy thing. If I try to enter that, it will self-correct into a registered trademark. But that is our formula. That is a thing of beauty, so much easier than matrix algebra. Now, another great thing about Excel is any non-zero number is interpreted as true in all functions that can interpret trues and falses. Zeros are false. So we don't even have to convert this further, F2. We just put it inside a filter. Here's the entire table. That's the array, comma, include. Those are all of our trues and falses in the form 
of non-zero numbers and zero. And bam, just like that, we filter to include any text over here that contains this text. Now, if you want not F2, remember that argument right there has what Excel understands as trues and falses. And the way you switch true to false and false to true is with the not function. So we just put not around by row, close parentheses at the end. And just like that, let me apply some formatting here. We have done it both ways. We filtered to include records that have the partial text criteria. And here, we filter to include records that don't have that partial text criteria. All right, I'm so glad we have by rows and lambda to help us avoid that matrix algebra. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.